We are going to be doing a review for the common assessment that you are taking. Right here. Let me do the first one for you. Um, it says in a sequence of numbers, a sub five equals two, a sub six equals three, a sub seven equals four, a sub eight equals five. Based on this information, which equation is used to find the nth term in a sequence? Okay, I wanna show you how you're gonna be able to find this out. So the first thing we're gonna to have to do is go and write these into ordered pairs. Okay, believe it or not, they show you ordered pairs. And what they're saying is this, the fifth number in the sequence is two. So this number is gonna be your X and this is gonna be your Y. So I'm gonna build a table over here, X and Y. The fifth number is going to be two. The next one right here, the sixth number is going to be three. The seventh number is gonna be four and the eighth number is going to be five. These now, all of that right here that we just looked at right here, they gave me ordered pairs, so now I can figure out what my equation is. So I'm gonna pick two of the points. I'm gonna use five, two, and six, three. You could have used either, any of them, but I'm gonna use these two. And we're gonna label them as x1 and y1, x2 and y2. So the first thing we're gonna go through and do is find the slope. Because to have an equation, I've gotta have my slope. So slope, remember, is gonna be y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. I would make sure to have all these notes down to be able to help me um, when you go to take your common assessment. So y2 is three minus y1, which is two, over x2 is six, x1 is five. All right, so now three minus two is one, six minus five is one, one divided by one is one, there's your slope. So now to write our equation, I'm going to use point slope formula. You're gonna use the slope and one of your points. Doesn't matter which one. I'll use that first one. So I'm gonna have, let's see here, y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. Okay, m, the m right here is one, x1, x1 is five, y1 is two. That's your equation in point slope form. If I write it, if I simplify and put it in slope intercept, I'll multiply right here. I get y minus two equals one x minus five. Then I add two to each side. These cancel, y equals x minus three. This is the equation in slope intercept form. This is the equation in point slope. Now, doing the same thing, I want you to pause this and I want you to try and do number two. Let me move this up a little bit. Okay, so now first thing we're gonna do is write these as ordered pairs, remember? So as I go through here, X and Y. So the third number in the sequence is negative nine. The fourth is negative 11. The fifth is negative 13. And the sixth is negative 15. Okay, so now I'm gonna pick two of the numbers. I'm gonna go ahead and pick the top two. So I've got three 
negative 9, and 4, negative 11. So now I'm going to, when I go to do my slope, y2 minus y1, negative 11 minus negative 9 over 4 minus 3. Remember, when you have minus and negative, they change to positive. So I get negative 2 over 1, which gives me negative 2. This is my slope. So I'm going to use this slope. And I'll use this point, and I'm going to put it in point slope form. y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. OK, so m right here is negative 2. x1 is 3. y1 is, where's it go, negative nine. Now, minus a negative, so it changes to positive. So I get y plus nine equals negative two times x minus three. That's your equation right here. This is point slope form. If I wanted to put it in slope intercept, you would multiply these. y plus nine equals negative 2x plus 6. Subtract 9 from each side. y equals negative 2x minus 3. This is what you would have gotten in slope-intercept form. All right, let me move this up. Here are the next two. If you want to try and do these on your own, do that first. But I'm going to do number, you can pause the video, but I'm going to do number three first, and then you can try and do number four. It says, Cade collects Pokemon figures. Each storage container holds five figures. If he is given two figures as a gift, what is the function to show the relationship between Y, the to total number of Pokemon figures, and X, the number of storage boxes K owns. Okay, so what you're going to do, you're going to start it off with Y equals. Now, it says X is the number of storage containers. And five figures goes into each storage container. So that's five is going to be your rate of change. So you're going to put 5X. Then he is given... So that means you're adding two more figures to it. So I'm going to add two. This will be your equation. If they were taking, if he was giving them away, if he was giving them to his brother or sister, then you would subtract the two. But since someone is giving it to him, that's why you're adding two. So try and do number four. Pause the video and try and do number four. On number four, it says Kyla collects shells. Each storage container holds 13 shells. If she is given 62 shells, so again, we're adding right there. But what is the function that shows the relationship between Y, the total number of shells, and X, the number of storage containers she owns? Well, you'll start it off Y equals. 13 shells go into each container. And X is the number of containers, so you're going to do 13X. Then she is given 62 shells, so you would add 62. And this is the equation you should have came up, come up with. Let's see. Let me find the next ones. All right. So it says, what is the equation of the line that passes through the points 2, 4, and 7, 3? And they want us to write it in standard form. So if you think you know what it is, pause your video and see if you can do it. But I'm going to do number 5 for us. And then maybe if for those of you who still aren't sure, it will help you do number 6. Guys, first thing you need to do when you're given two points is you're going to have to find the slope. So I've got y1, x, x1, y1. Oh, my gosh. Hard for me to write, not very pretty writing. Okay, x1, y1, x2, y2. 
to find your slope. Remember, M is slope. That's Y2 minus Y1 over X2 minus X1. So if I plug those in, Y2 is 3 minus Y1 is 4 right here. X2 is 7 minus X1, which is 2. 3 minus 4 is negative 1. 7 minus 2 is 5. This is the slope I'm going to use. So I'm going to use one of my points. I'll use this one and this slope, just kind of like we did on number one. So the first thing I have to do is write it in point slope form. Y minus Y1 equals M times X minus X1. M is your slope. So let me erase that. My slope is negative one fifth. My point that I highlighted, my X number is going to be two. My Y number is four. Okay, so this is what it is in, in point slope form. Now we have to try and write it in standard form, but the first thing we're gonna have to do is put it in slope intercept. So I'm gonna multiply here. So I'm gonna get Y minus four equals negative one fifth X, negative times a negative is a positive, two fifths. Now, some people go, well, how did you do that, coach? Well, just put it in the calculator, guys. Negative one fifth minus, um, minus two. Negative times negative is a positive, okay? Now, actually, before I put it in slope intercept, what I'm gonna do now is I wanna get rid of this, these fractions. And the way you can get rid of this fraction is you're gonna multiply everything by the denominator. So now I'm gonna take five times Y and I get five Y. Five times negative four gives me negative 20. Five times negative one, oh, I got an equal sign, sorry. Five times negative one fifth gives me negative one X. I don't have to write the one. And then five times two fifths is gonna give me plus two. Okay, next step, bring the 20 over to the right. So now these cancel and I get five Y equals negative X plus 22. Remember the standard form is AX plus by equals c. So I need to move this x to the other side. So I'm gonna add x to each side. I get x plus five y, these cancel, equal 22. This is standard form and here is y. x and y have to be on the same side of the equal sign, which they are. The X has to be positive, and it is, and there can't be any fractions. So guess what? This whole thing right here is in standard form. Try and do the same thing with number six, following the steps that we just did. Try and do that for number six, and then come back and see how you did. First thing you should have done is for your slope, Y2, negative three minus y1, which is four, over x2 minus x1. Okay, so now, negative three minus four is negative seven. Remember, minus and negative, that changes it to positive, and this gives you nine. Let's see, three, negative three minus four, yes. Seven minus, yep, here is your slope. So now we're going to use this slope and this point and put it in point slope form. Okay, my slope. My slope is negative seven over nine. My point, my X number is negative two. My Y number 
is four. Look right here, guys, minus a negative. That changes that to positive. So let me erase that right here. Oop. And I'm gonna change it to a positive. Now, I'm gonna multiply right here. I get y minus four equals negative seven ninths x, then negative seven times two, negative 14 over nine. Now that yucky fraction, or I don't want that, so I need to get rid of that nine. So I'm gonna multiply everything by nine. Nine times y is nine y. Nine times negative four is negative 36 equals nine times that negative seven over nine. That We did that so I can just have negative seven x. Nine times negative 14 over 9 is negative 14. Okay, move the 36 to the right, so I'm going to add 36 to each side, and I get 9y, these cancel, equals negative 7x plus 22. Now, you got to get x and y on the same side, so that x has got to go over there, so I'm going to add 7x to each side, and I get 7x plus 9y equals 22. This is your equation in standard form. All right, let's look at the next two. Looking at the next two, let me erase this out of here. Okay, what is the slope of the equation that is parallel to the x-axis and goes through this point. All right, let's make a picture and kind of remember, let's look at this. So here is a coordinate grid. Here's my x-axis, x and y. If it's parallel to the x-axis, that means that it's not gonna touch. It's parallel, so it's gonna give me a horizontal line. The horizontal line, okay, horizontal remember what i talked about horizontal has a z in it what number has a z in it my slope is going to be zero now the equation it touches the y axis here is the y number so it's going to be y equals three Try and do use the same thing that I just talked about on number seven. Pause the video and I want you to try and do number eight. Number eight, what is the slope in the equation of a line that is parallel to the x-axis passing through the point three, four? So here's my coordinate grid, there's my x. If it's parallel to the x-axis, it's gonna look like this. We just talked about the fact that the slope of a horizontal line is zero. It touches on the y-axis, so it's gonna be the y number. So my equation is y equals four. All right, where are we going here? Let me find the next one. Here are the next two. Think about what I just did on the parallel ones, and let's go and think about perpendicular. Try and do these. So it says, what is the slope of the equation of a line that is perpendicular to the x-axis and passes through the point 5, negative 3? Here is my graph. Here's my x-axis. Perpendicular means it meets at a 90-degree angle, okay? So if you're talking about perpendicular to the x-axis, that means that it's going to be a vertical line, okay? So I'm gonna have a vertical line. What is the slope of all vertical lines? Okay, vertical starts with a V, it's gonna be something that's gonna make some kind of U-shaped thing. Oh, I was trying to give you hints is what I'm trying to say. The slope of a vertical line 
is not a number because you can't run up a vertical line. It is undefined. Now to figure out the equation, it crosses the x-axis. Here is the x number. So your equation will be x equals 5. Try and do that on number 10. Number 10, right? You have your x-axis. If it's perpendicular, it goes up and down. Okay, we know that the slope of a vertical line is undefined. This vertical line touches the x-axis. Here's my x number. Your equation should be x equals 10. All right. So let's move this up. I'm um, we'll have to start here. Okay, so I want you to look here and I want you to try and answer this and see if you can find the answer. It says, what is the ordered pair that best represents the location of the y-intercept? Guys, here is the y-axis right here. Where does this cross the y-axis? It's at this point right here. Starting at zero, you go up one, two, three. So the y-intercept, the y number is three. The point is zero, three. Try and do that here on number 12 and tell me what is the ordered pair that represents the location of the y-intercept. Y-intercept, y-axis. It touches here, that is at negative four. So the Y number is negative four. It is zero, negative four. Okay, now let's look at number 13. It says, what is the equation of a line that is perpendicular to the line graph and passes through this point. Well, first off, you've got to find the slope of the original line. So when I look at this graph here, what is the slope? Well, here's what I like to do. I like to go and I'll find points, like here's my, if I can, here's my x-axis and here's my y-axis. My slope is one, two, three. It's up three and to the right three. So what is three over three? That is one. Now see, look, because if I go up one and over one, up one and over one, that's my slope. The slope is one. But the perpendicular slope, remember, this is one over one. To be perpendicular, you flip it over where it's still 1 over 1, but instead of positive, it's negative. The perpendicular slope is negative 1. So I'm going to use negative 1, and I'm going to use this point to find the equation. We're just going to put it in point slope form. y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. There we go. Okay, M is my slope. That's where I'm gonna put the negative one. My X number is two right here. And my Y number is three. This is my equation in point slope form. I'm gonna go ahead and write it in slope intercept. I'm gonna multiply here. So I get y minus 3 equals negative 1 times x is negative x. Negative 1 times negative 2 is positive 2. I will add 3 to each side. These cancel, and I get y equals negative x plus 5. That is the equation of the line that is perpendicular to this line and goes through this point. Try and do that now on number 14.
Let me get my paper spaced out here. Okay, remember you have to find the original slope. So I'm gonna start, here's my X, Y intercept and my X intercept to find the slope. One, two, three, four. Up four and over one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, over eight. So my original slope is four over eight. If you reduced that, it is one half. But I need the slope that is perpendicular. So I'm gonna, to make it perpendicular, I have to flip my fraction over two over one. Instead of positive, it becomes negative. So my new slope is negative two. So I'm going to use this slope and this point. So I have y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. OK, so my slope is negative 2. My x number of my point right here is 2. My y number is three. This is the equation in point slope form. I'm going to write it in slope intercept. So I'm going to multiply these and I'm going to have y minus three equals negative two x plus four. I'm going to add three to each side. y equals negative two x plus seven. This is the equation of the line that is perpendicular to the graph line and goes through this point. Now remember, let's go here and look at number. These are the last two on this page. It says, what is the rate of change of the line of the equation graph below? Okay, first off, you gotta remember what is rate of change. Rate of change is the same as the slope. It is the delta y over delta x, which is the change in y, the change up and down over the change across. So I need to find two points to figure that out. So I've got one here at zero, zero. Now, what I like to do to figure it out is from left to right, this line is going down, okay? So that means as I start here at zero, zero, if I go down one to the right one, I'm not on my line. Okay, I need to find a point how to get on the line. So if I go down two to the right one, I'm still not exactly on that point. What if I go down three? One, two, three to the right one. Ding, 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 ding. Down three, so that's negative three, and to the right one negative three over one, divide those, it's negative three. This is your rate of change. This is your slope. Try and do the same thing over here on number 16. On number 16, I see two points. I see a point here and a point here. Now, here's the trick to it though. Look, I'm going up one, two, three, four lines and over one, it looks like. But look what the labels are. You have to be very careful. This is going from zero to one. So right here, what's happening, when I go up from zero, I'm going up to two. Even though there's a bunch of steps here, this is up two and over one. Up two and to the right one. Two divided by one is two. You have to look at what your, um, how many, what these numbers are that are on the side to be able to figure out what your rate of change is.